lost. Deep in the woods of Nova Scotia, on a maze of logging roads, I came across a faded sign saying, The Electric City, La Nouvelle France. Intrigued, I just had to follow it. And in the process, learned about abandoned ruins that were once an egalitarian utopian society, which was among the first places in the Maritimes to have electricity and running water, and even a train which ran on wooden rails. You're listening to Backyard History, the hidden stories that happened in your own backyard. The podcast version of the weekly history column running in newspapers across the Maritimes with your host and author, Andrew McLean. At the time, I wasn't even vaguely sure where I was at all. I had attempted to take a shortcut and ended up on a long and headache-inducing bumpy drive over some very much washed out and overgrown dirt roads, which eventually led to a clearing. Walking around the clearing in the forest, I didn't immediately see anything like a city, or for that matter, much of anything at all. Upon looking closely, though, I noticed that there were some stones in the shape of what was presumably foundations to a building. It was a building at some point, but that was so long ago that a tree was growing in the middle of it. Not a mere sapling either, but a full-size tree. As I wandered through the overgrown forest, I began to make out more shapes of what was once human activity. There were a few large rectangles of rotting, moss-covered woods. There was more misshapen walls of rocks in the vague outline of what had once been buildings. The area was totally quiet. Even the animals were eerily silent. Whatever human activity had taken place here once had long moved on. There was no sign of anything to identify what had once been here. I suddenly heard voices in the woods, which startled me so much that I jumped. People were approaching, and they were speaking French. Out of the forest, two men emerged. One was old and stooped, with a long white beard, and the other slightly younger, who was clean-shaven. From the context, it seemed that the older man, who seemed local and quite familiar with the area, was giving an old friend from far away a tour of the ruins. He graciously, although somewhat begrudgingly, answered my endless questions about this place, and so told me the story of the place that was once known as the Electric City. In 1892, the wealthy Stahelin family departed France with their 11 children amid a series of European wars. They were searching for peace. They ended up in the Acadian part of Nova Scotia in a small village called Nouvelle France. There, they set up a business in the lumber trade, making masts for ships, boards for carpentry, and so on. The tiny village quickly grew and flourished. There was a sawmill in the river, which was able to power nearby buildings with electricity, which was very rare at the time. Power cables reached all of the main buildings in the village, providing them with electricity. And this was some decades before many villages in the Maritimes had electricity. Many of the buildings not only had electricity, but even had running water, which was also a surprising luxury for a small village at the time. In fact, the majority of rural maritime homes did not get running water until after the Second World War, which is nearly three quarters of a century from the time of the Electric City. The Stahelin family, escaping from European wars, held utopian ideals and wanted to build a peaceful world where all were welcome. The village they built attracted open and progressive-minded residents. And in Nouvelle France, the Acadians, immigrants from France, black loyalists, Mi'kmaq peoples, as well as people from numerous religions, lived together without regard to race 
religious, linguistic, or class divisions. There was an emphasis on equality and respect in the village. The Stahelan family apparently trusted the workers from the village. So when a group of Akkadian workers, most of whom could not read, came up with the idea for a train that ran on wooden tracks out to the coast, the idea was pursued. And indeed, it actually worked, bringing rail service to the electric city. Although it was built as a peaceful refuge to get away from these faraway wars in Europe, war eventually brought about the end of the electric city. Only two and a half decades after the Stahelan family fled France and its wars to far away Canada, France found itself engulfed in a far bigger war than anything the family had fled, the First World War. France was suffering badly in the conflict and implemented mandatory conscription for all adult males of age who were French citizens. Unlike other countries, that had implemented conscription, such as Germany or Russia, where one could get deferred from serving in the army due to educational or family commitments, there were no deferments, and virtually every male from France between the ages of 20 to 45 were conscripted. Furthermore, France refused to acknowledge the naturalized Canadian citizenship of its citizens who had departed the country long ago. The government of France declared that if any French citizens refused to submit conscription into the war, they would face being charged with treason and shot the next time they returned to France. Many of the people living in the electric city were French citizens. So they, along with several of the Stahelan sons, were conscripted into the faraway war. Meanwhile, the economics of timber in a fast modernizing world of iron weren't as profitable anymore. So the town, now bereft of most of its people, declined rapidly during and after the war, and it was soon abandoned completely. And so the electric city was left to become overgrown by the same forest that was once its raison d'etre and its fascinating legacy as a progressive attempt at a more egalitarian society was largely forgotten. That was Backyard History with your host, Andrew McLean. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for another hidden story that happened in your own backyard. Produced by Jordan Lozier.